Greetings from Cote d'Ivoire and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about why I started my channel and some things I learned being MGTOW because um, first of all I want to say coming to be an expat in Cote d'Ivoire has been a long road. I started this channel over thir or probably since 2013. I'm not monetized. I would like to monetize so please I'd ask that you share and subscribe and comment below and try to help my channel grow. I'm going to try to provide uh, some type of commentary as an expat living in Cote d'Ivoire, kind of show um, my life a little bit uh, here and how I got here. Uh, this is mainly a men's channel. Uh, of course, women are welcome, um, but this is mainly uh, trying to connect with other men and and let them know that there are um, different ways to to expand your your life. Uh, a lot of men my age that have been divorced. I'm 54 years old. A lot of men in my position have be, it, maybe they've gone through divorce. Maybe they lost their kids. Maybe they're bitter, angry, um, and I, I don't say those things in a negative way because whenever you experience loss or anything like that, you have to go through the stages of grief. And so, I, first, I want to say if you're a man and you're in these spaces in the manosphere and people call you bitter or angry. So even me, sometimes I recognize when men are bitter and they're angry and they're, um, and it's, it's not hatred of women. It's not hatred of anybody. It's, it's really not bitterness, like unresolved bitterness. There really is, there are really things to be pretty angry about in society. Now, because I've been in the MGTOW and, and I've been in the manosphere for so many years, for over a decade, I was back when MGTOW first started, when the red pill started gaining traction. And so I, I know a lot of these life lessons. And um, so, but, it, but even though I'm not here to give necessarily specific advice, um, but I will tell you, uh, and I don't want to name drop, but I, sometimes I contact Immortal Minds. And if you know Immortal Minds, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, he has a great channel where he speaks to men. Um, and he has, he's not necessarily a MGTOW, but he is connected to the Manosphere. Um, and so I, he reached out to me a few times after I reached out to him. What a great guy. I'm very supportive. He's always says something positive. And um, I was, and I'm a little bit uh, one of those guys, I, I guess I worry about what people think sometimes. So I know that, you know, when I share my opinions on here, or if I share my life, I know I'm going to get criticism and I'm going to open myself up to uh, maybe people with bad intentions and that's just the way it is, but I'm going, but I'm going to be vulnerable. Um, I'm not going to get on here and cry, uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to allow myself to be vulnerable, share my life lessons, uh, what I learned. And, but he, but one thing that really stood out for me about immortal minds and shout out to immortal. Uh, he told me, listen, brother, you're, you're going your own way. And the life that you're going, and I'm just paraphrasing what he said, actually expounding on it. But he told me that one man's journey is not supposed to look like another man's journey. Understanding your identity and making a decision. But you have to understand, brothers, man, there are very few men who can check those two boxes. We're talking about the small select few, brothers. So the first thing, man, is, is identity. And I've said it a number of ways. I've said that the first thing a, must, a man must ask himself when he wakes up in the morning is, who am I? And when he said that to me, it really hit me because I wasn't following a traditional path. Like, even though being MGTOW, I was still open to being married. Uh, not in the United States, by the way. That's just my my uh, my stance now. I, I'm probably not going to get married uh, anytime soon. However, that doesn't mean that it's going to be totally off the table forever because I am in a relationship now and that might be something down the line. But for right now, I would say in the United States, it's probably a bad idea to get married for 99% of guys, unless you have, um, unless you protect yourself in, in certain ways and not necessarily prenups, but, um, you know, just really vetting the person that you're with. And so anyway, uh, also, I want to say that I'm inspired by a new channel. His name is Jim B. Discovering the Manipulated Man by Esther Villar, another great book. And she wrote that. This is a woman writing this in the 70s. So this was Red Pill way back then. 
And um, so I have been consuming red pill content and watching the videos. And, there, and of course, you, if you don't know who that is. He's a fellow veteran. He's retired. He's about my age. And I really want you to check out his channel. He really does a great. He really has inspired me to start my own channel and take my channel seriously. And, the, and I'll just be up front with you right now. The reason why I want to start the channel, I want to get a thousand subscribers. I would like to monetize. I would like to maybe sell merchandise, T-shirts or hats or something here in Cote d'Ivoire or and or even um, just making a little like a like a side hustle. I don't know. Uh, I, but I want to provide I don't know what I can provide a value. I'm not an expert on anything. I'm not a therapist. I'm not. All I can share with you is my life experience and what's things that I've done, mistakes I've made. And I've made a lot of them. Uh, but I've also. I've uh, been through divorce court. I've been through divorce rape. I've been through false accusations. I've been falsely accused and uh, spent some time in jail. I've also uh, am a disabled veteran um, for about almost 10 years now. I was diagnosed with extreme PTSD and I'm 100% um, uh, get compensation. So I, I'm certainly not living high on the hog. I'm not a a flashy YouTuber. I don't think I, I don't, I don't have a drone to go and make these city, uh, the, these panoramic views of Cote d'Ivoire, which I'm going to go out in a few, stick with me in the future. I'm, I'm going to go out and start uh, looking at beaches and uh, talking to locals um, because I don't, I don't speak French, but I'm also going to be learning French while I'm on, while I'm making these uh, videos. And I'll try to um, take requests if anyone wants to see a part of the city. Uh, I'll probably leave links uh, later in the future videos to maybe PayPal or something if anyone would like to donate and what I'll try to do in that arena. And these are just ideas. Like I don't script videos, but since I've been here, I've rescued two animals. Uh, that's Rex. And I rescued a kitty that I just found on the side of the road. And it just so happens that the girl that I'm with now, uh, Michelle, she is a veterinarian. So... Uh, I started looking at a lot of animals here in Cote d'Ivoire and a lot of uh, animals are not vaccinated. There's a lot of stray dogs. Uh, there are some, uh, some, there are some people that um, maybe eat cats and dogs around here. So uh, I don't, you don't see that many strays. I'm not saying it's wide, worldwide, but there are some. Um, so animals are really not valued here. I, it's, uh, some people do have pets. But uh, I noticed that a lot of people just don't like uh, Michelle just went on a, about a year ago, went on a call from a person that was a friend of hers that had a dog and they never got vaccination. And the, dog, the dog got a polio. So maybe I'll look in the future, look at something where I'll take donations and I'll sponsor an animal where I go out and, and I'll uh, if I get a donation, I can go out and provide vaccinations for the pet. Uh, for pe maybe I'll stop people with pets that I see and that, that's not very often and stop and find out if they are vaccinated and maybe sponsor that animal, maybe highlight it on the channel. I have a few ideas. I just, um, but this is going back to Jim B channel. Jim B is uh, a very wise man. He has a lot of experience in the military and he talks about history. And he likes to talk about all the things that he's learned because Jim, we're, Jim and I have a lot in common, but we also have a different, uh, how we came to MGTOW and the red pill philosophy. His was a gradual, uh, realization or with his experience and he read many of the books uh this he you know read rollo tomasi greg cooper uh, he listens to our mortal minds he um uh, even angry guy uh, i was on a podcast many years ago turd flinging monkey i told my story that's why i'm not going to tell my story too much but i will touch on it sometimes now as i've said before i was MGTOW. i, I want to say I, approximately because i didn't really go I didn't really like real I take MGTOW seriously until I left the relationship I was in for 11 years uh, with a Filipino woman that I lived in Sacramento with. And uh, that went really bad. And <laughs> even after 11 years, so I became sort of MGTOW. So roughly about five years. But um, so during that time, I was uh, about I was in my mid 40s, early 40s. And I started really reading all the books, The Rational Mail. And I started I started really understanding the the veil that i saw the matrix i in the justice system i see it with women I, I know female nature very very well i would almost say now i i don't i'm not claiming to be an expert on women i'm not saying that but let me just tell you a story and it will kind of solidify what i'm saying to you and and bef and let me preface this with no matter what kind of an expert no matter how much you know no matter how 
many years you've been doing something. Uh, I'll just take Dale Earnhardt Jr. or uh, maybe some uh, maybe famous pilots. Uh, even if you're an expert in your field and you know what you're doing, those people still can die, crash and burn. Um, you know, you, you can be the best race car driver and get out and something happens and you die. It wasn't because you didn't know how to drive. It's because you're on the track. Now, a lot of people can, you know, there's a lot of people that can go and teach things. There's an old saying where the, those who can't teach and, and, but then there's guys like me that I know all there is to know about female nature. I've read the red, I've read the rational mail from cover to cover. I know female nature so well that I can usually pick up on signs. And, but even then, because I'm one of the, listen, I'm not a Chad. But I'm not an incel. I'm one of those in-between guys that have always gotten female attention my entire life. I was raised by a single mother. I've been a womanizer. I've had so I've lost count how many uh, women I've been with, and that's that's not a flex. That's actually I, I have a regret about that because it didn't take that many to learn about female nature. It, it really doesn't. But when you grow up as a uh, as a with a single mother and you don't have a father figure, uh, I all I did was try to womanize women. And, and because I have my, my looks have always been decent enough to where I attracted female attention and it, it wasn't always the right kind, but then I was just trying to fill a void, uh, just going from woman to woman to woman. So let me just tell you, this is when I knew that it was time for me to get back in the trenches. I thought about making YouTube years ago and trying to make a men's channel where I could teach people, but I'm not good at it. I, and plus, uh, when I saw the amount of men's channels and the people that were doing it well, and I mean, real, like the Better Bachelor, uh, like I'm not necessarily fit, the fresh and fit. Those things are more um, pop, uh, red pill. You know, they, they, they go on or pop the balloon or, you know, a lot of these channels. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the men that do it really well. Uh, the one that comes to mind is Better Bachelor, Immortal Minds. They are, these guys are polished now YouTubers that really st uh, are able to, to go and look at the news, talk about politics, talk about female nature and what men are going through. Number one, respect, 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 respect. Even if you don't love the man, but you respect him, he will love you. Another channel is men need to be heard. So brothers, let's be clear. You don't want to be on the phone with no woman talking about anything. Because let's be honest, most of it is vain lies and irrelevancy and it's meaningless anyway. Drizzle, drizzle. If you don't know that one, I'll try to leave that link in the description too. So these are men's channels. So there's so many, so many men that are doing so much better than me. So this also is very freeing for me because that means that I can go back out and participate in life again with knowing what I know now. But I know that there's dangers and I've, I've ran into those dangers. Even though I know female nature now, I, I know how to vet women. I know how to, to get in bed with a woman. I, I'm, 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 I know how to game. I know how I'm not a pickup artist, but I, I'm not shy around women. I'm not socially awkward. Um, uh, so I have some, some experience in my, uh, and plus, and fundamentally, I'm a nice guy. I am the nice guy that is polite. I don't like to hurt women's feelings, but as I get older, I usually will tell the truth more and more. But, um, and that was one of the reasons why I went overseas. But anyway, so let me tell you a quick story and then I'll end the video. So, I was gaming. I, I, when I started my channel, I would make gaming channels, and I met a man, um, a young man, and we were uh, we were on one of those. I can't remember the name of the game. Is one? Uh, it's a t it's a team based live game where you're everyone's. You know, it's not like a game. It's not a one player. You have a team. So we were on. My, I was on mic with several guys, and I and this guy, uh, he was nice. He was one of the guys that would help me because I'm not a very good gamer. Uh, and he was helping me get through the game and uh, re uh, reviving me. If you guys know anything about Call of Duty and those types of games, you know that you know you know how it works. Now, over the course of the year, me and this guy began playing um, like a couple times a week. Uh, maybe sometimes we skip a week, but over the course of the year, we would game together and talk. And we never talked about anything in depth. In fact, it took me a year to figure out that he had a retail job, that he was around 27 years old. That he had a girlfriend, that he lived with his girlfriend, that he wasn't married, his parents were intact, super nice guy, uh, sort of average, probably average in looks. Um, he he wasn't he wasn't red pilled at all, um, and he was very uh, you know he, he wasn't into fitness. He he was a gamer, 
nice guy. So, and really, I, I really like this guy. And we'll just call him John because I don't want to reveal who he is. But uh, we're still friends, and I don't know if he'll ever see this video. If you see this, I hope he doesn't take it as any kind of disrespect or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> so what happened was I began asking questions. Uh, hey, so I noticed that you're on. Listen, I was single at the time, so I'm playing video games a lot. There's no woman to nag at me or to tell me to get off. I could spend six to eight hours on a video game if I wanted to, and him too. And I thought to myself, hey, how do you spend so much time? You work, you have a girlfriend. How is it that you're spending as much online time as I am? And I said, do, I, and I just asked a question. I said, do you ever fight with your girlfriend? Do you ever, does she ever have? He goes, no, no, no. You guys have sex? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have sex. And so uh, then he sent me a picture of his, I got a picture of his girlfriend. Now, his girlfriend wasn't the most beautiful girl, but I would say for, for they, they were sort of evenly matched. She's probably a little bit, if he was a six, she was probably a seven. Uh, she was at least uh, at least a one count ahead of him. So I thought, about, okay, this guy works retail. He doesn't make very much money. He lives in his apartment. Uh, so I, I just started. So I, I told him one day um, about after about a year because I really liked him. And, we, you know, my friends, I like to tell the truth. And I considered him a friend at that point. And I said, hey, I, I think your girlfriend's cheating on you, man. And, um, and, I, and in my head, and I, I asked him where he lived. Now, listen, first of all, he didn't know, no, she would never do that, and blah, 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 and, and I said, okay, okay listen, I, I don't mean to be offensive, and he, but he got really defensive, and um, I asked him where he lived, I looked on a map of where, it was, it was some place in the mid, mid, Midwest, I looked, there was a military post around there, I saw where the military post in, in proximity is, and I, and I even told him, I said, hey, man, I think she's cheating on you as somebody from the military post. I don't know how I knew this. I mean, listen, I know how I knew it because I know female nature now. I know that you can't be in a relationship in that, at that age at that time and not, and not be engaged in a relationship. And something was, uh, something fell off to me. I just, there's no intuition. I just took what I learned about female nature, relationships, gaming, his age group, how she looked and the way the American culture is. And, but he got really mad at me. He probably will deny that he was mad at me, but listen, the guy didn't talk to me for nearly four months. And he finally called me back and he wanted to talk to me. I was like, well, this is weird. And he calls me and we do, a, a, I don't think we did a video call, just a, we didn't normally do regular calls. And he wanted to tell me that I was right, that he had discovered that she had been cheating on him and that she had already had a relationship with sleeping with this other guy and ensure, and, and, and in fact, he was from the military post. She admitted everything. I, even I surprised myself. How in the fuck did I know this? Because, and but this was another reason that told me, hey, listen, I think I know enough now about female nature that I, because I had swore off relationships. I think now I could get out there, but I wasn't going to do it in America. No fucking way. And this is not a diss on American women. Listen, hi, American women. Uh, I love you too. But I don't like the culture. I don't like the entitled feminist viewpoint in america and, and it's not every woman is like that but enough to where it, i i don't feel safe in america so that's why i chose to go overseas and i'll never date another american woman for the rest of my life I'm, who, how many more women am i gonna am i gonna date anyway i'm 54 and i'm no loss in it, so you can call me dusty you can call me broke uh you can call me out whatever i go to another country to take advantage of poor women yeah i do <laughs> because it, over here it's a natural order of things so anyway I'll leave it at that and uh, look forward to more videos coming and I'll, uh, and listen, if there's anybody that wants to get on here, there's, I've already had a few people make very rude comments to me, uh, say things that I'm probably just going to delete those comments because I don't want to hear any stupid shit. Uh, if someone has a real criticism or some advice they'd like to give me, I'm all ears. Uh, I'm certainly not, uh, I don't, I have thick skin. I'm not, I'm, I don't get triggered. Um, but if you're rude to me or if you say some dumb shit to me, I'll just, uh, you know, go, go to another channel. Okay. Go to, this is maybe this, this is not for you. All right. Anyway, thank you, YouTube. See you later. See you on the next one.